and it would almost terminate at this point for what has developed. Beyond that point, because the sidewalk's going like this and it'll meet up here, there's nothing on that portion. So I don't know if the, the, the logic here was to terminate here before we got into the outlet and wait for this to fully develop or not. Uh, I don't know if the developer might be here tonight. He can address that or maybe somebody in our uh, public works department might be able to address the logic on that. But the sidewalk already exists to the left, doesn't it? Or not? This, yes. Yeah. So it would have something to connect to on that side. Yes, potentially. I I don't know what logic they were. I mean, when they wanted to, we wanted them to stage that in. Uh, I don't know our public again. Uh, somebody in engineering or engineering division or somebody. Uh, speaking for the petitioner might be able to address that issue. Brent, do you want to address the sidewalk on 56? Yes, sir. My understanding, Greg, was that since they were doing a single lot, they did not separate out the lots at this point for any future development. Uh, if they keep that a single lot, I apologize, I didn't realize that note was on there. They would have to build that sidewalk uh, the entire length now unless they've turned that into multiple lots. By city code, they would have to extend across the entire frontage. And and I would just say this, in our conversations with Mr. Gaveman on uh, the development to the uh, west, he's been very cooperative. And as you can see, he set up the serpentine uh, sidewalk and uh, it actually is very attractive, very functional for them. And I'm certain that it, it, we have discussions with him, he'll he'll move that along as soon as possible. It's showing on the site plan. It should go in. Yeah, I, I believe that note might be an error, Greg. Like I said, it's a, it's a single lot now, so they're required to put in all the walks now. Any other questions? Hey, Scott, uh, this would just be a clarification of the city policy. If he's planning on putting another building on a single lot, can he not could he not, according to policy, bond for the second half of the lot? I mean, you can't on new construction on houses. You can bond for sidewalks that you can't get in or couldn't put in. So I just wondered if that oddly comes up, if that would be allowed by him so that we're not all freaking out because he, he bonded. Yeah. Uh, hey, Decker, it's Mark. Can I jump in real quick? Go ahead. Yeah, so I think, um, I think part of what's going on here is just that we've worked a lot with this developer uh, on those sidewalks and some additional trails that will actually transit the property um, and be accessible to the public. So we've been pretty lenient in our interpretation here just to allow, uh, acknowledge the work that he's done over and above on the existing sidewalks. I have no concern that we can get sidewalks on all frontages, you know, whenever we need them. Um, so again, I think staff has had an ongoing relationship with this developer that has been positive and there's been a lot of extra extra work done on this site, including sidewalks that aren't even required by code. So um, staff's concern on, on getting the sidewalks in place is minimal. The, Mark, the question is uh, regarding the bond, either you or Brent. Yeah, we, 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 could, we could ask him to do that, uh, sir. That would be something we could do, I guess. Um, th that's fine. We can go that route. I, it may not even be necessary is my thought. Yeah, I, I would prefer in this particular case that all the walks go in along 56, especially with the change we made in the lane configuration uh, a few months ago, converting that from the, the wider kind of in, ambiguous lane configuration to now the dedicated three lane. Um, that pushes all the traffic to the curb lanes uh, I drive that frequently and still see some people walking down that curb lane, which forces people out into a turn lane, which uh, is definitely not the safest configuration. So I think we need to get those in with this project. I think that solves it, Your Honor. Other questions? All right, then I'd like to entertain a motion that consent agenda F, as in Frank, stays on tonight's agenda. Moved. Second. Those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? We'll take it up unanimously tonight at our 7 o'clock meeting. Let's move, please, to consent G, and this is a final plat for Forest Grove Crossings, 5th. Craig Beck, thank you, sir. Your Honor, uh, the um, and members of the City Council, 
This is also somewhat of a dual presentation, but it uh, again, the uh, final plat goes the consent agenda item list. The site plan, however, is what we're going to be looking at. And uh, essentially, you're looking at the northwest portion of, or northeast portion of what is uh, the um, Forest Grove Crossing additions. And this being the interstate up here, further down here, we have Forest Grove Drive. This is the portion of the overall design that is being contemplated. And these are mainly for triplexes. The original uh, diagram here or the preliminary plat was going to indicate uh, something maybe of a different configuration a little bit. But uh, for the most part, multifamily was intended for this area. And uh, it's the way in which the final plat delineates these and this is just to give you an idea. I'll, we'll go forward here. This is the final plat showing the way all of these lots are delineated for tri, basically triplex type development. And let's, yeah, here we go. There. This is essentially what we're looking at triplexes throughout. I know it's a very complicated uh, site plan. It seems that the labeling overlay here is uh, a layer that should have probably been removed and withdrawn. But each of these is designated pretty much in this arrangement for triplex development. The type of four unit townhouse development is designated for these lots right here. Under the UMI designation, these are permitted types of designs that are uh, going to be found and have been found and have been uh, saleable within this subdivision and other subdivisions of the city. So what we're looking at is something that is not out of the ordinary for a UMI or something along the lines of R3 or R4 designation. Uh, staff in reviewing this proposal would uh, recommend approval of the site plan under consideration tonight. I would ask, are there any questions? Already staff has recommended approval as well as the Planning and Zoning Commission. Any questions? We'll go right, we'll go Scott and Jerry. Thank you, Your Honor. Is the rest of uh, <coughs> Mary Lee Drive for those triplexes too? To the um, west? Where might you be indicating, Councilman Webster? You mean these right here? Yeah, to yeah. the, to the yeah. west of those, are they all similar? I believe they are, yeah. You go up That's to the bigger, there's a bigger map there, I think, <clears throat> that shows everything to the west. Yeah, I couldn't see the aerial of that. So these are all know. right here. If you'll note these lots of record. So they're all? They're all triplexed, yeah. They're all developed. Same there. street has the same product yeah. on it. Yeah. The back street. Mm -hmm. And yeah. then they're These are all split out with the same configuration. Perfect. Thank you. Jerry. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, a sidewalk question again on the corners. That's surprising, Jerry. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, on the corners, it doesn't appear as though he's got the, the handicapped ramp going through the curb. Uh, we Well, oh, again, with the geometry that he's got drawn here, it may not be that easy to see, but we're, we would make sure and ensure that he does have the proper connections throughout the subdivision, even if they're not shown on the site plan, he will be compelled to comply with the, all the ADA standards regarding the sidewalks. Okay, that's good news. Yeah, but, oh, go ahead, Jerry, do you have something else? Uh, no, I was just gonna say, but that doesn't show on the drawing, so I wanted to bring it up. Okay, Bill. This may be more for the engineers. Uh, is a uh, development of the stormwater detention in this subdivision keeping up with the pace of the rest of the development? Yes, it is. Okay, thank you. Any other questions? All right, seeing none, I'd like to entertain a motion that consent agenda G remain on tonight's agenda. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? We'll take it up tonight by unanimous <clears throat> vote. Let's move to consent item I, please. This is a resolution approving a site development plan for 3425 Glenbrook Circle South. 
Greg. Your Honor and members of the City Council, uh, this site is accessed coming off of Devil's Glen Road and then immediately entering here on uh, Glenbrook Circle North. This is the southern portion here and essentially you're looking at a private drive extension here and these units will be addressed from this locale. They will not be addressed, however, uh, from here coming in, even though the access is here, majority of it faces out to this direction. And uh, what you're looking at again is another development. This is all under one zoning designation of uh, UMI for the entirety. This used to be partially R3, partially R5. City Council uh, it was petitioned by the developer for the overall site to change it to one designation, so that's the outcome. You do have some commercial here. You do have multifamily here. You've got townhouses here, single family here. So we're sort of seeing all this stuff come together as uh, a variety of different uses. And that's what we're seeing with these fourplexes in this instance right here. Lot five is essentially the lot we're looking at for the lot of record uh, for this uh, site. It is the lot five of Glenbrook Ridge, second edition. And even though it may show things being divvied up in this manner, these lines here indicate what was in the past. What we have right now at the present is one lot of record. And this just gives a little bit more closer elaboration of what we've seen here with, again, lot five being here. Uh, the petitioner, uh, we did not want them encroaching into any area here where the pipeline is and as well. There are other easements and utilities in that area, so that's why the sole means of entry is here. It does comply with our fire department standards. And what we see now is the site plan. Uh, refuse removal will not be conducted uh, within the interior. There is a turnaround that does come in here, but given the design of this, we uh, felt uh, that the standards uh, for our vehicles to get in there were uh, rather uh, onerous, I shouldn't say onerous, but more stringent than what would uh, this would tolerate. So again, uh, the uh, refuse removal, I believe is also stated and there's a condition in the report requires that uh, they use an alternative means. The accesses will be very similar here, pedestrian wise as to what we see uh, at the development at uh, Devil's Glen and 53rd. Uh, with that development uh, is in the Springs uh, lot that was a remnant left over. Uh, staff in reviewing this proposal would uh, make a recommendation for approval. I would ask, are there any questions? And also P and Z uh, approval, made move, uh, motion for approval as well. Bill. Mr. Beck, is this the last of the developable lots in the subdivision? I believe there is another, go back to this. I believe this region here is still uh, undeveloped and that might be the very last. Then we get into the senior housing up here. Uh, I don't know that there is much, there might be some area here, but yeah, we're getting down to the point where there isn't much ground left in this site. And this has been subsequently in this area subdivided into a different addition. So. What you're seeing, at least in this area here, is not the same thing that uh, this council seen in the past. There are subsequent iterations of other subdivisions. I I have seen a lot of fill going on in on this uh, lot five. That's just probably something everybody needs to be cognizant of when they start to develop. Other questions, Scott. <clears throat> um, I got some concerns on this one. First of all, the final plat isn't even the right final plat. Um, that's concerning to me. This plat's been changed about six times, and this is, I believe, the original one, not the accurate one. So that is a huge concern to me. There's easements in this ground that aren't showing on here. This originally was one lot, it was a commercial lot. And my big concern with it is, is if we're not looking at the final plat, there's only one entrance. How do you get out? There's more than 30 homes in there and there's only one entrance shown. 
I believe that there's only four units in each one of these structures. There's only one entrance to the entire subdivision shown on here. There's no second entrance. So there's no fire entrance shown on this plat. Well, if we look at the immediate, and that's something I'll let our fire department handle, but if we have an immediate entry into this right here and you have immediate access outwardly, uh, I would let their fire department, uh, they've all also had oversight of this. I'd let them make a determination on what their viewpoint is. Yeah, I, I don't disagree that you have it for this lot, but Mm -hmm. That's the second entry. Yeah. It's, again, it's not even, it's not the right plat. This, this plat is, this is a portion. This portion here is part of the Glenbrook. Yes. Yeah. yeah. This I, portion over here, though, this area here, yes, that is not part any longer. That I has can, been replatted numerous times. Yes. I, I completely understand, but we can't do 20 lots in each subdivision and then still only give them one entry by saying that we're splitting it into three different plats. It's, I, I think there's a second entrance that's supposed to go in there, but it's not shown on this plat. So that's, this one's a huge concern for me on, like I said, the, the plat, and I know that staff has had a huge problem with this. Mark has said it in the past. I mean, this plat's changed probably at least six times that I know of. And again, this isn't, this isn't the correct one. So it's do we know one entrance with that? Do, is Mark, can, Mark, can you Mark, give can us, you enlighten, us enlighten us on this, the statements made by the yeah, council so, member? Yeah. Um, Councilman Webster, I think I, I believe that this subdivision primary access is, is off Devil's Glen Road and it's been developing that way for some time. I do think that there is some access to the south. Uh, if you go off the, um, it would be the southwest corner of this lot, there is some access provided um, interlot access additionally, but there's not um, right now another connection point to Devil's Glen Road uh, that's, that's coming in uh anytime soon but again we've we've had the the development of this of the um uh, multifamily i'm sorry the senior living complex and all those have, that have come before this have also been developed with that one entrance off devil's Glen road and, and isn't the private drive to the north even though it's a private drive built to city standard so the from the front to the south or to the south, south, to the south, south i mean right oh, sorry yeah, it's to the south. There's there's interlot access to the south. But your point is there's only one way to get there from Devil's Glen. I, yeah, I can give you an example. A cement truck turned over in that driveway to get in there. Yeah. You had no way, if anybody had a medical emergency, to get in or out of that subdivision. None. It was completely blocked. Yeah, now, I, the I, fire I, trucks I will figure out that. a way to get in there. Trust me, they'll take somebody's lawn out if they have to. But I could have swore... One of these plats, like I said, it, it, what's so confusing to me is this is this technically isn't the last plat, and one of these plats had an entrance to the south. Off of Devil's Glen is what you're saying. That w yeah, that yes. would have made that up. But again, I, I don't think this by any means is staff's problem. I think somehow they keep getting the wrong plat. Like, I get it. It's not this individual lot, but the rest of this plat isn't right. It's, and it's extremely wrong it's had problems on building permits and everything else i know because i've built a couple houses in there so it's i think the developer should turn in the right plat when they're turning in part of the plat but mark amazing. do you have any difficulty making this a continuance for two weeks to i think that would be a good idea your honor we staff would recommend that we continue this for two weeks table this item mr plain he's there is actually uh, another entrance off to the south that That's goes into the southernmost, and there is a, an access that does, I mean, from, I can't really tell from the most updated maps, but uh, there is an, a second access to the south to access. Can that, you pull your uh, GIS up? 
Jim, Craig. you want to help us out? Yeah. Tell me what we don't know or what, what you think we know. <laughs> yeah, you bet. Brian Bell, Axiom Consultants. Thanks, Brian. It, the reason you're, you are correct, Scott, you're seeing a different plat is because that lot five is part of that plat. The, the third plat, final plat, and the last one has changes to the west, as Mr. Beck uh, described. So the, the reason he's showing this, he's just showing the, the plat that refers to that lot. But the site plan, obviously, is just directly related to lot five. This has nothing to do with any final plat being submitted as part of this item. So that's just solely being used as a reference. The, the final plat isn't an item. Um, as, as Public Works Director noted, there is an access to the south as well that comes in along the apartments, apartment buildings, south of those apartment buildings continues west and then will be interconnected with the senior facility. I believe it does. Okay. You don't see it on any of this. But again, this was just lot five site plan. So there wasn't anything in terms of the final plat or anything like that. This was just for lot five. And Glenbrook Circle South, does that, that connects to the driveway to the south, correct? Yeah, through and then to the over, yes, it goes over to the senior home and then connects down to the south. So you have a second access. So that's your second access that you correct. know that we needed. And and that and that drive, correct me if I'm wrong, Brian, but well, that drive was constructed to city standard? Yes, yes. correct. Yep, the, yeah. the drive and Glenbrook South, as we alluded to, it was though it's private street is to city standards. Okay. Correct. I'm not sure our GIS that we would show unless you could pull up a, a near map. It's not on here. Uh, Taylor, if that could be shown on the screen for the council, is that possible? Or the... Latest Here GIS? April, maybe? Yeah. Possibly. No. If April's your latest, it might, yeah. April's our latest, so. Could be in there. Get that on. Yeah. But yeah, the, the final plot they've shown, like you said, is, is older, but that's just <coughs> what he's using as a reference point. Sorry, Craig. That's why we had Craig here, Your Honor. <laughs> Perfect. what it is. I hate to have Taylor come in and pinch in for you, Craig. Yeah, I might need to. Sorry about that. Yeah. Taylor might be able to do it. Sorry about that. Here. Can you get there by phone? <coughs> <coughs> I was going to say, it looks pretty cool. It's a new system. It always jumps. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get it fixed. <laughs> With all that money we spent. That's what you got right here. No, oh, switch the date then. Okay. There's your, there's well, your, there's your second going. entrance. Yeah, keep going. You keep going until we but get right it here, and that's the last. And this is what you're yep, that's most seeing recent. is the interconnectivity. Yep. And Does this that, is where the petitioner is right here, and then this, and then that'll be that connects. connecting right through there. Okay. So there is... It's not, it's not immediate, but there is that second access point through. <clears throat> to your point, the other plot and, and shows even that. More, no, even there. more, go ahead, Mark. Your Honor, even more directly, they can, they can enter, they can <clears throat> transit through the lot that is um, in, the, uh, in the corner there, the lot that's at the corner of Devil's Glen in that southern drive. There's actual 
they'll actually be paving clear through so they can connect inner lot directly to those units. I remember having a discussion with the uh, right there, Chief State about this. Yep. So that does there is more direct access than it appears. Is that Brian? Is that true? I don't yes. think yeah, that's correct. Okay. Assistance. That's paved. <laughs> that that's my also. No, not north south there right now. No. But will it be? That's but it will be, as I understand. Yeah, yes, yeah, correct. Yeah. So you'll have two that, accesses off Devil's Land as well as interconnected two, three ways, really. Perfect. All right. Thank is you that, for that, Brian. Right, does that satisfy the concern gonna, or do you want to? We're gonna go, we're gonna go ask that question. Scott, now that you've seen that and you're in the we're feeling good about the two access points, or do you want to kick it? I'd like to hear from other council members. I guess now what time? Or is it near future, year out, six months out, or it's probably for a hard right surface? What's the flavor on looking at this tonight? Or I'll I'll second Scott Webster's motion. I I think we need to go back to the developer, sit down, and take a look at this whole thing, and just make sure that we have good public safety access in and out of this. Okay. We got a motion and a second. Is there discussion? What's a motion to table? We'll go ahead with a vote. Uh, all those in favor of tabling item I, it would come up at our next meeting, presumably. Uh, uh, signify by aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, we'll, title, we'll table item I. We'll bring that back in a couple of weeks. Sorry, but thank you very much, Mr. Bell, for your information and your folks at Silverthorne Development Group. Uh, we appreciate your investment. We'll work on getting this cleaned up for the next couple of weeks. We'll move to our next resolution. This is, <clears throat> excuse me, establishing a cost share for the proposed sump pump collection systems and our new subdivision ordinance for this. We welcome our city engineer, Brent Morlock. Is that right? Brent's going to do it? Or Brian I Schmidt? I can handle it, Your Honor. Thank you. From uh, Public Works. Thank Thanks, you, sir. This is a companion <clears throat> resolution in support of item nine on tonight's um, Correct. agenda, amending our subdivision ordinance, which is um, adding the installation of a sump pump manifold system in new subdivisions. Uh, this resolution op, uh, outlines a five-year cost share initiative um, for this program where years one and three will be a 50-50% cost share between the city and the developer. Years four and five will be a 25% city, 75% developer, and after year five, uh, this will be 100% on the developer. This is, a, this is very similar to what we introduced uh, when we first um, did the uh, drainable base uh, in, underneath our uh, pavement to meet our current standards. Questions for Brian? I know we've discussed this before. No questions. Okay, I'd like to entertain a motion. This remain on tonight's agenda is consent agenda item C. So moved. Second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? We'll take up it up as item C. Let's move to item K. This is a resolution authorizing our human resources director to continue to work with Rock Valley Physical Therapy with regard to our wellness program. For that, we welcome human resources director Kathleen Richland. And Brooke, thank you for being here, too. It's okay. I'm going to take my mask off. We can hear you better. Yeah. Thank you. Good evening, <coughs> Mayor and City Council. With me this evening to present the wellness plan update to you is Brooke Sweeney Adrian, our HR generalist. And we also have behind me uh, Kyle Ray and Jill Lang, both are with True North that assisted us with the RFP process. It's very exciting to talk about our wellness program and that we are currently approaching the fifth year of the wellness plan in our day-to-day -day operations and are pleased to present some of the highlights of the program. As part of our employee stabilization cost directive, focusing on employee health and wellness can have an effect on the overall health costs. The city has recognized an approximate net 2.42% increase in health insurance over the past couple of years. Please note that obviously COVID-19 did affect the city's overall costs where there was a reduction in claims for a period of time and then a spike when claims when facilities started to open up. The city has been well below what the underwriters put together for the city's activity on the plan. While this number is less than a trend, we do continue to incorporate our wellness plan as a way of reducing overall cost for the city into the future. So at this time, what I'd like to do is turn it over to Brooke, and she's the person behind our Be Well emails. 
and is very involved in the <coughs> wellness program. She works with the wellness committee in terms of creating the various wellness programs available to our employees. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Kathleen. Uh, thank you, Mayor and Council. Uh, for your continued support of the well Employee Wellness Program. As you probably remember, the Employee Wellness Program, or Be Well, was created in 2015, mm -hmm. and that received support from you, from management, union, and non-union employees alike. The stated goals of the program were these. One, to improve employee health and create healthy lifestyles by reducing employees' utilization of maintenance medications for their lifestyle diseases, and by positively impacting metabolic syndrome numbers. Two, we wanted to create a healthy workplace culture by improving corporate and individual behavior. Three, we wanted to reduce absenteeism and presenteeism uh, resulting from lost time uh, in illness. Four, we wanted to assist in reducing workers' compensation incidents by reducing uh, the risk of injury. And last but not least, we wanted to, of course, impact healthcare spending by eliminating the onset of diabetes and reducing the risk for catastrophic events. Now, since its implementation, the Wellness Committee, represented by employees across the various departments and unions, has met on a monthly basis uh, to review the components of the program. Uh, in 2016, we put together our first long-term plan, and we identified what our goals were going to be year over year. And every year, we gather together to review that program and adjust to make any changes. Now, 2020, we experienced a lot of changes, um, namely the COVID-19 pandemic. And so we changed both the program offerings and the incentive requirements for wellness uh, to make sure that we adapted to that rapidly changing nature of operations in 2020, uh, to make sure that we continued to uphold our program goals and uh, maintain participant safety. If we examine the numbers from the 2020 program, we'll see uh, that 2020 reflected the impact of those stated goals. Now in 2020, we saw 82% of eligible employees actually earning the wellness discount that we put in place. We had a total of 294 participants in the program, 183 of those being unique participants. On average, we saw about 20 participants per event over the 20 events that we hosted in 2020. There you go, a lot of 20s in 2020. <laughs> um, those included the Biggest Loser Challenge, the wellness walks, the quarterly health checks, flu shot clinics, all of the things that you see in your Be Well emails. Now the coaching that was provided by Rock Valley Health is also um, one of those proven results programs that I think is worth mentioning. Last year, there were nine voluntary participants in health coaching over 12 months, and three out of those nine were considered high risk. That means that they had three or more uh, risk factors resulting in metabolic syndrome. Now, by the end of the 12-month coaching program, all three of those high-risk participants reduced their risk factors and no longer have metabolic syndrome, which was a huge accomplishment uh, considering the pandemic. Now looking at the program numbers is one thing, but hearing the voices of the employees who've participated in the program is another. We had two employees volunteer to share their stories uh, with council. And the first employee is a public works employee. He participated in the Biggest Loser Challenge and had a Rock Valley Health coach. That employee went from 190 pounds to 165 pounds, HDL from 35 to 46, LDL from 108 to 60, and a waist circumference from 34 and a half inches to 32 and a half inches. So big changes. The employee continues to be a champion of wellness and is actively working to improve the health culture in public works. The second employee who volunteered to share their story is a firefighter. Now this employee <coughs> sought uh, health coaching from the Be Well program to help control blood sugar. After just six weeks of coaching, the employee lost 10 pounds and saw a change in fasting blood sugar from 225 to 120. 
that employee continues to take advantage of health coaching for both accountability and for continued education. Now, I don't have a lot of pictures from the virtual events that we hosted in 2020, but I can share with you some <clears throat> pictures from our recent Be Well events. And what might not be obvious from these pictures, but um, is reflected in the photos, is the engagement and the participation that we get from all departments across the city. We're very proud of what the program has to offer. Thank you, Brooke. As you can see in her presentation or hear in her presentation, we do believe that we are making a change in the culture within the city in terms of wellness and also engaging in a lot of teamwork, as you can see with the um, past pictures you just saw. So for the upcoming year, staff worked with True North to facilitate the RFP process for a wellness vendor and continue our culture. Requests were sent to Genesis, Unity Point, Trinity, Rock Valley Health, Health Solutions, Profile, Health Fair, Weight Watchers, and YMCA. Additionally, the RFP notice was obviously published in the newspaper as well. <clears throat> True North received three responses, one from Genesis, one from Health Solutions, and one from Rock Valley. True North compiled and analyzed the return proposals and made their recommendations to staff. As you can see in the financial comparison, staff took approximately 186 participants from the 2020 aggregate year, as well as the at risk from the highest month of participation. In review of Health Solutions, Genesis at Work and Rock Valley, it is noted that the lowest estimated cost would be from Rock Valley Physical Health. Supportive elements that make Rock Valley stand out are their best practices and services, tailored programming, local on-site clinics, and their established positive relationship with city staff and employees. The success of the Rock Valley program aligns with the philosophies of Be Well program. Those include in focus, a focus on encouraged lifestyle changes to promote long-term health, personalized solutions based on data, and mitigating financial risks. Jenny Tackett, who is a Rock Valley representative, is really getting to know our employees and is always available to participate in quarterly checks, biometric screening, and she's always a face at the Wellness Committee. Therefore, staff is recommending and requesting approval from council to contract and continue the relationship with Rock Valley Health. We are confident that our trend will continue with employees participating in wellness programs and events. The city is committed to providing a healthy and safe atmosphere to protect our most important asset. We truly thank the mayor and city council for all the continued support. And I'd be happy to answer any questions. Any questions for Kathleen? Wow. Thank you, ladies. Great job. Well, yeah, Bill wants to. We, just, we can't go without one. I get it. <laughs> go yeah. get him, Bill. Does this thing have sidewalks? <laughs> <laughs> hey, sidewalks are good for walking. <laughs> they ought to be in every neighborhood. Walking, <laughs> 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 shoveling. Oh, walks. it's getting deep. <laughs> uh, during uh, new employee orientation, do we explain this program to them? Uh, yes, we do give them an overview? Yep, we do. Um, from the first day that an employee walks in, we explain how the discount works in their orientation packet, and we'll also send them a follow-up reminder um, so that they can participate in the program. Okay, thank you. Got to get them right at the beginning to get them started into the culture. Very nice. I'd like to entertain a motion that this remain on tonight's consent agenda is item K. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? We'll take it up in a little bit. How about any remaining consent agenda items any particular council member would like to talk about at this time? You have A through R. Seeing none, let's approve that consent agenda by vote now. How about a motion? So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? We'll take up the entire consent agenda as written this evening. How about any operational items? We have a public hearing, a resolution, and an ordinance. Any of those that any particular council member would like to ask questions about or discuss at this time? All right. Let's approve the rest of the operational items on the agenda with a motion. So moved. Second. Uh, those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? We will take up our operational items. I have nothing to be added. Any council additions this evening? 
All right, seeing none, I'd like to entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. We stand adjourned. Good work, people. We're starting at 15. I'm going to go talk to some baseball players. I did that work. Sorry, I just want to take a few minutes.
<laughs> Tom, you want to say something about these guys? They did a fabulous job. Um, some of these guys are 12 years old, so this is their last stand in Little League. Like, they won out away. I don't know if anybody got a chance to see it on TV, but they did a remarkable job. The, bi the biggest thing is these kids never gave up. They overcame adversity, they were down runs, and they consistently came back and overcame and won. They just had that one catch that diving catch the kid made. Otherwise, we, they would have went to Williamsport, and I'm confident they would have won. So, but big round of applause. Like I said, this is a huge deal. First time in 46 years. And uh, these guys, they outscored their district opponents 89 to 6. Um, so, and they did very well at state. And uh, they, like I said, we're proud of them. And uh, we wish them well for the ones that are 12. But some of them are 11. You'll probably see them back here next year. If you have us back, I think we're going to go to Williamsport next year. Awesome. We'll have you back. Yep. Some of the things he touched on for really the reason we here. Hard work and dedication, overcoming adversity, these are qualities of great people, not just on a baseball field, right, or an athletic competition, but also the folks that you see in this room, the people that lead this community, whether it be in that or in Bethlehem. We're holding you up as an example to those watching on TV or those who see yourself on Channel 9. All your friends are people who have those characteristics that make great citizens when you grow up. So thank you for what you do. You're probably too young to realize it yet, but this is going to help hold and shape who you become, whether or not you won that game, right? That was a heck of a trip, but you're still exhibiting those qualities and they're great humans, great citizens. So this is a gift to you from the city for the Southeast Little League 12 U All-Stars 2021 Iowa State Little League champions from us here at the city of Edinburgh. So congratulations. <laughs> combination of uh, 13 total players we got five here most most of our kids are at football Davenport kids Bettendorf kids PB kids um, we like Thomas said our president we were we were one game away uh, playing Nebraska uh, in Whitestown Indiana lost 2-1 um, we did play we played Nebraska we played South Dakota who, who went on to the Little League World Series. Uh, South Dakota ended up getting fourth, and, and Nebraska went two and two. So the Central re Region wa was a strong region this year. And, and when they went to the Little League World Series with, I believe, 16 teams uh, representing the whole country, they, they did really well. And South Dakota did extremely well and got, and got fourth place. So just kind of reflecting on, on kind of the journey that we had. Um, I, I'm just so proud of each and every one of our players. Um, they, they just continue to battle and, and step up and, and just be, be a total team. And also, it, it, it's a big effort. It, we, so we had a district tournament here in the Quad Cities, which we went, we went five and zero, oh, and then state tournament was out in Sioux City which we were there from a Friday to a Friday, um, went four and one, played Johnston in the championship game that went 10 innings, um, and then came back here a uh, quick week, continued to have practice, and then went back out to Whitestown, which is just, I think it's uh, about a half an hour outside Indianapolis, and went, went two and two. Um, and you kind of realize, I mean, all, all the coaches, all the players, all the parents, grandparents, um, si siblings, just all the help that that helped shape this team and, and continue us 
to to move forward. So I, I just want to say everyone here, everyone not here, thank you. Yeah, that's good. I don't know what That's what we do. We like that. We like that. Everybody gets one. You get one. You get a couple. Just kidding. <laughs> Congratulations, you. you guys. Thank you very much. Thank you. Good job, guys. Thanks, Council and Mr. Mayor, for honoring the kids. We appreciate it. Thank you. You are welcome to sit around and learn about the inner workings of government. One more thing that might be kind of cool. This is the recognition of the QC corporate game. So we're going to need you guys to step up next year because we only got second. <laughs> but we do have a couple of MVPs from our corporate game. Thank you very much for all your hard work. Congratulations, Evan. Caitlin, how are you, dear? Congratulations. I'll give you the floor. Oh. Wow. <laughs> we got second place. That's awesome. That is awesome. This is the first year in the corporate games here in the Park City, so uh it's got a nice show piece of this. Oh, it's right heavy. Right. It is pretty heavy. Very, Very cool. Careful. You guys want it? It's heavy. Pass it around. Pass it around. Heavy, just be careful. Um and then Evan, you want to get the one drive? Evan, get closer to the butt for the mic. Oh well, my, my bad. I thought I was generally loud enough. <laughs> um uh, we Holy won the blood drive. Uh, most participation in that, and then also the volunteer award for most volunteers for the corporate games, which is fantastic. Um, I would like to take this opportunity to thank the council for uh, allowing us to participate. I thought it was a great uh, team building activity, a way to interact with everybody in different departments that you might not see on a normal basis. It was a great way for us as uh, employees to show our support and pride in our community and a really fun way to get people involved in the wellness program which for me has uh, been life-changing really I'll say it um, with the wellness program and our involvement with Rock Valley and the council providing us uh, employees memberships to the fitness center uh, I was able to lose 60 pounds last year keep it off and then the healthiest <laughs> So we hope that next year it's going to be even bigger and better and more participation. And we can bring home the big trophy. We want the big one. <laughs> it's down there now. <laughs> awesome. Caitlin, you got to say Caitlin, something. Caitlin, go ahead. Caitlin. Here. Oh, there you go. It was just really great. It was great to get to meet people I've never met before, even though I work with them. It was a great opportunity to just get out of my comfort zone and participate. So I had a really fun time this summer. Cool stuff. You guys know Chuck Long? Yes. Now you might be too young. Parents, do your jobs. Chuck Long. <laughs> <laughs> Chuck Long is part of the QC Corporate Games, and he was the one who provided these awards that the city won and all these medals. I think that uh, we've got a new fabrication shop coming out to Public Works to create uh, metal, metal shadow boxes for everybody who won more than one, and that's all, all these people. Look at this, Michelle. You got two or three over there. Yeah. You got three, you got four or five. You got lots of people with medals. Brooke, good. Who's Decker's? I got well, one. Decker got one? All right, that's <laughs> out. Over 20 events and competitions were offered in June and July through this Quad City Corporate Games, included competitive and non-competitive events to get teams and individuals out to just be healthy and be more active. The City of Bettendorf earned those three awards, the volunteer service, the blood donation, and second place overall, the big trophy we're setting around. Well, all of the 88 of the City of Bettendorf participants, 88, did a great job. We have two voted on as our MVPs, Caitlin, an accountant, payable, uh, payable clerk in the finance department, uh, seven and a half years here with the city, also has worked in the Family Museum during that time. She is an exemplification of a team player. She participated in 10 Quad City corporate game events, regularly recruited teammates and volunteered to participate in sports in which she had never participated. She earned two gold medals, a silver medal, and a bronze medal in her events and received 65% of the MVP votes. Kind of like the All-Stars, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. Got to have the team members vote. All right. Evan, Evan's in sanitation. He's been with us at the Public Works Department for five years. He's a champion of employee wellness, as you heard from his own words. He regularly participates in our Be Well offerings at the Quad City Corporate Games 
Well, they were no, they were no exception. His competitive drive and athletic ability earned him two gold medals and three silver medals in the corporate games, making him the most decorated <laughs> Fettendorf athlete. Out of that 62.5% of the vote, they're both deserving of MVP status. Woo. Ladies and gentlemen, one more round of applause for our MVP. <laughs> We have some glass glass for you. <laughs> yeah. Evan, you get one too. Awesome. They both say the same thing, right? Let's <laughs> hope so they're very similar. Yeah, they are. <laughs> Presented to our MVPs, voted as the city's most valuable player, a male and female, for the Quad Cities 2021 Corporate Games. So, congratulations to you both. Thank you for your participation. Congratulations on your trip to Wellness and, and how hard you're working on it. That's you, amazing. Thank you. Uh, rub off you a little bit. Yeah, so I'm, I'm trying. I'm little, trying. I'm <laughs> trying. I've got a couple pounds to go. Uh, so these are for the group, for the city. Yeah. Thank you, yep. Yep. Thank you yep. very much. Great job, baby. Thank you. Thank you. Get that big uh, trophy. Can you do this and this? Yes, you can. Uh, you can we do this? Yeah. Uh, you can hold that one, yeah. All right. Yeah. <laughs> There you go. Down, down, down a little. All right, thank you. Awesome. Thank you. I don't know. You'll have to screen capture. We're going to bring more back next year. Thank you, guys. I'll tell them. Everybody's jingling and jangling, wearing their medals tonight. That's fun. Great job, everybody who participated. Thank you all for allowing me to speak highly of some young people doing great things in our community and to recognize two MVPs of our own. We move to public requests of counsel. Is there anybody here who wishes to be heard on an item not already on tonight's agenda for public hearing? We'd like to hear from you. If you would like to, please approach the podium in the back, state your name and address. We are told that will work better than the last equipment. Let's hear it. Anybody? <clears throat> Ray Youngman, 508 River Drive, Bettendorf. Hi, Ray. How are you? I'm well, and you? Oh, all right. Uh, I apologize. I want to be here for the 6 o'clock meeting, but my wife drug me off for a COVID test, which the quick one came back negative, but they said, well, we have, these are always negative. So anyway, I got the mask on. I'll be out of here as soon as I say this. Okay. Okay. Uh, Talk about item C on the consent agenda. Like I said, I apologize. I wasn't here for the six o'clock meeting. And it looks like you might have discussed it there. Uh, the only question I have, it looks like we're going to cost share with developers for uh, some with the sewage. Uh, my first question would be, what's this going to cost? I don't expect an answer right now. The, the second would be what is the criteria if somebody wants to participate in this program, what's the criteria that's used to judge whether or not the city will participate? Uh, oh, and the uh, third one, is there any specific project in mind right now? So we'd be happy to get you the details, but suffice it to say it's, it's a change in the ordinance so that every new subdivision in certain areas where they have these kind of sump pump issues will have to be part of the program. So, but I also emailed you back today because you've That's got some- I appreciate the response. Absolutely, I'm gonna get you those specifics. I'll get you these specifics and maybe we can sit down and chat. It's not sewage. All right, great. That, that yes, no. it's sewage. It's, it's stormwater. Stormwater. Yeah, did I say sewage? No, no. Oh, right, right <laughs> well, I did. I didn't think I did. Just want people yeah, thinking it was well, let's uh, get them, sewage. Yeah, we'll get that figured out. It's just stormwater uh, management okay. issues. Yeah. All right, I appreciate it. Like I said, I'll get out of here because even though it was negative, it's... Well, we hope you're well, no matter what. So good luck. good. Thanks, Thank Ray. You. I'll get back to you and we'll chat.
Anybody else wish to be heard on an item not already on tonight's agenda for public hearing, please approach the podium in the back, state your name and address. We'd like to hear from you. Okay, we'll close the public hearing. Let's move, or public requests of council to move to a public hearing. This is with regard to our sanitary sewer rehabilitation program, and this is a sewer issue. Brian, tell us what we're doing. Thank you, Your Honor. This is a, a biannual program where we go in and um, use uh, slip line our existing sanitary sewer with a cured in place plastic pipe to eliminate I and I that's existing in our sewer system. Okay. Making sure the old pipes are doing the best they can with the new pipe in between so that nothing gets in or out. Yes, sir. All right. Any questions of Brian before we start the public hearing? Council Member Adamson, I see you. Go ahead. Just curious, how, do you, how many miles of this do we have in, in our we city? Ha <clears throat> we actually have 206 miles of sanitary sewer ranging from six inch up to 96 at the Davenport Bettendorf border. Uh, yeah. border. Wow, that's a lot. It is. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Other questions about this before we have a public hearing? Then maybe a discussion on the item. All right, seeing none. Michelle, did we publish notice of this public hearing? Yes, we did, Your Honor, and I do have an affidavit of publication. Did we receive any written correspondence with regard to the same? No, we didn't. Let's open the public hearing with regard to our sanitary sewer rehab program. Anybody wish to be heard on this item? Lots of people lining up to tell us not to fix the sewers, I bet. But I don't see any, so we'll close that. Move to the resolution. Council Member Baden, please. Thank you, Your Honor. I have a resolution approving the plan specifications and form a contract for the 2021 Sanitary Sewer Rehabilitation Program. I move approval of the resolution. Second. Any discussion? Something we've been through each and every biannual. And we appreciate Brian and your staff's continued diligence in this regard. Okay, Michelle. Connors? Aye. Nauman? Aye. Sexer? Aye. Baden? Aye. Webster? Aye. Adamson? Aye. Brown? Aye. We have unanimously approved our 2021 Sanitary Sewer Rehab Program. Brian, get to work, my friend. All right. The next item is an ordinance for Council Member Webster. It's a third and final reading. Thank you, Your Honor. I have a third and final reading of an ordinance amending Bettendorf Municipal Code, Title 12, entitled Subdivision Regulations, and Title 7, entitled Public Ways and Property. I move approval of the ordinance at its final reading. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion here? Obviously something that we knew was coming, worked on it. One committee of the whole, two city council meetings. All right, Michelle, please, call the roll. Connors? Aye. Nauman? Aye. Sexer? Aye. Baden? Aye. Webster? Aye. Adamson? Aye. Brown? Aye. All right, we move to our consent agenda, and we have removed item I at our committee of the whole meeting this evening. So a motion to approve consent does not include item I, but I would like to entertain that motion at this time. So moved. Second. Second. Is there discussion on any particular item? Understanding we had a meeting before this to talk about this very list of items. Seeing no discussion, Michelle, would you please call the roll? Connors? Aye. Nauman? Aye. Sexer? Aye. Baden? Aye. Webster? Aye. Adamson? Aye. Brown? Aye. We unanimously approved, approved all but I of our consent agenda. I'd like to entertain a motion to adjourn. Moved. Second. We stand adjourned. Good work, people. Thank you all for being here. Two